welcome everybody as you can see a little bit of a different setup today we're gonna try this for longer videos it's a little more comfortable to sit on a couch I don't know if our faces are too far and you're like I can't see mm. your faces the audio is hopefully better though um, with this setup as well we have yeah. these microphones uh -huh, look at how microphone looking they are this is what we do on like our patreon and stuff for k-pop yeah. stuff k-drama stuff but we're gonna try it for one of our uh, channel yes. videos yeah, so this should be cool. The video will be able to be very large. Yes, very large. But uh, I don't know if YouTube, you want to see more of us or the video needs to be big. So uh, let us know. We might be able to use the mics and just make the camera closer as well if that's preferred. Uh, let us know what you let think. Yeah. Anyways, we got an interesting video that I got recommended uh, it's called How the U.S. Stole the Philippines. Yes, we are from the U.S. Yes, actually. we are. And we react to the Philippines. And the U.S. likes to steal stuff. They do. They Sometimes do. Um, it's a black liquid. Oh, oil, 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 oil. Yes, uh, we... Uh, we know a lot about the U.S. stealing things. Yes, uh, they, of course. They like to, you know, hop into places they're not supposed to be and, you know, destroy countries uh, for the black liquid. But how did they steal the Philippines? Ooh. It was, uh, this is actually, we actually did a history. This is kind of a history reaction. We did a history of Philippines reaction. And I think somebody in that video was like commented a big paragraph under the assumption that we somehow supported the colonization of the Philippines. No. Um, that is inaccurate. Yes. A lot of people very, very, like, they misjudge our ideology a lot. But uh, let's do this. Johnny Harris, the most intense man on YouTube. This will be an intense video, especially with the title. Yes. If you enjoy, subscribe, like the video. We got uh, more Filipino content on the channel. We have a travel uh, channel okay. just open. Check that out right now down in the link below um there'll be some see, vlogs on there you might be able to see this duck in the vlogs too he's pretty cool all right let's do this ducky for Thirty thousand years traveling between these islands trading with each other and with the region and developing religion identity and culture it eventually became a country called ma'i and while all of these advancements were happening here on these islands another group of humans had been evolving in another part of the world over here in europe spain espana but this other group had a different culture a different religion Many of their advancements were achieved through expansion, not collaboration. Oh, the music is and very intense. And their religions thrived when they stomped out others. They wanted to conquer. They can't these islands, the these people, this culture would soon be swallowed, stripped of what made them them. And soon their name would be changed after the name of the king of their conquerors. This isn't a story just about a big, powerful military taking over new lands. We know that story pretty well. The story of these people offers a new perspective to anyone who will listen. It's a perspective that has been wiped from our history books because of the inherent discomfort and tension with this fact that the United States, once a colony that heroically threw off an empire to become independent, soon became an empire itself. It contradicts mm. our founding belief that it is, quote, self-evident that all men are created equal. And this story Except, isn't just uh, that history. also didn't that include people today, of color during that time either. Subjects. It's all wrapped up in the story of these 7,000 islands and their people. So I want to tell you or the women. story of how the no. U.S. stole the Philippines. There are still American citizens today who do not have equal voting rights. These are citizens of America's island territory. All right, interesting. The U.S. Constitution. The Don. Yeah, I was about to say, is that the Don? Throwing paper towels like basketball. How the U.S. stole the fish. This should be interesting. Very. But first, pause, an ad break. Um, because I want to that is you, one uh, downfall of this. Is to it's going to be very difficult to pause. To the All right. Sorry, Johnny. If you want to support Johnny, go look at his ad. So let's get back to the video. You saw the link. 
This video could be called How Spain Stole the Philippines, since Spain was the first nation to conquer and control these islands like Spain, 500 years ago. Actually, exactly 500 years ago. And indeed, oh. Spain left a very deep influence on these islands, not least the name itself, which is named after King Philip. Spain brought their religion, their language, their culture, which is why the most common last names in the Philippines are like Reyes or Del Rosario, De La Cruz, De, de Los Santos. But the heyday of the Spanish empire came and went, and by the 1800s, it was kind of crumbling. But it was the arrival of a new superpower that I believe had a bigger imprint, not just on the Philippines, but on the US itself. It established rules and behaviors that we still grapple with today. And that's why this is the story of how the US stole the Philippines. So let's go. To this day, All we right. can see the traces All right, Johnny, of take the us on this journey. Years of Spanish rule over the Philippines. Guys, we don't even need to but travel to the Philippines striking, anymore. Johnny's going to take us there. Johnny the Harris with his. Okay, so it's the end of the 1800s. Up until now, U.S. expansion sort of looks like this. It's all happening on this mainland. And at this point, there sort of became a big debate of like, do we keep going? Some people wanted to keep expanding the US outside of this mainland. The president at the time wasn't a big expansion guy, but he was surrounded by people who loved war, specifically oh, this guy. And these people who surrounded the president had their eye on this Spanish colony right off the American coast called Cuba, where the locals were rising up against Spain. Wait a minute, isn't this a video about the Philippines? Why are we talking about Cuba? We're getting there in just a second, okay? So anyway, okay, Cuba. Okay, thank you, Johnny. Americans I was wondering, Johnny, Cuba. come on. They're like, we don't need more war. But thanks to the explosion of an American submarine in Cuba, which was probably an accident, and thanks to some highly unethical journalism that blamed the explosion on Spain, and a big thanks to, again, this guy, Teddy Roosevelt, who at this point was just a peon. He was literally the assistant secretary of the Navy. <laughs> but he somehow cajoled his boss's boss the president of the United States to go to war in Cuba. Teddy is this that kind of man. He will get his fingers in everything. Yeah, the little Teddy fingers, you know. And he'll get his face on a big rock. He will. He will with other with three other people. Um, yeah, and I've heard too that the um, the whole like sinking of this ship too was possibly not even like actually the Spanish or if it was, it wasn't like the Spanish's fault really. Oh no, I don't. I think that I don't think it really was. It was like, uh, what's it called? It's where something goes wrong. It happened in Vietnam too. Yeah, it's it, where they like then, bomb it and they're like, they just did that. We have to invade yeah, them now. The America has never they have never started the war, but most of the things they do, ideology wise, or like they set up an event that causes the other person to start the war, but they really started it basically. Even if they, even if the people didn't actually blow it up. Yeah. Like there's no way the, like a lot of things, I think the USS Tonkin, the Vietnamese didn't really have the capabilities to blow up a US ship, but they still blamed it on them. So, hmm. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, well, I guess we got to go to war. Yeah. Oh, we they, don't want to do they it, but they us, did. It. guys, yeah. even though they may have not, but we have to. Teddy, Teddy Roosevelt's an interesting one, too, because he was like Mr. Trustbuster, Mr. Uh, National Parks, but also he's like, yeah, I want to kill people. Yeah, I, we are going to take land. Yeah. To, like, liberate the Cubans from Spain. So the U.S. declared war on Spain in 1898. But this begins a new era of war in the United States. No longer can you just go into war and just, like, take over land. You need an angle. You need to sell the war to the American people. So the angle Yellow on this war journalism. was liberation. We are liberating the people. The people you liberate will witness the honorable and decent mm. spirit of the American military. No, 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 that's, that's later. We're talking about 1898. <laughs> but yes, the whole idea of selling war to the American public didn't really go away after this. Why did the US go to war in Iraq? In the early stages of military operations. So anyway, the US is now at war with Spain which is an empire that is deeply in decline, as I mentioned. It's not gonna be hard to win. But soon, it's not just Cuba. The US, really meaning Teddy Roosevelt, who again is just an assistant secretary of the Navy. He's like not a big decision maker. 
he somehow maneuvers the situation to say like, let's liberate next door Puerto Rico. And while we're at it, let's go into the Pacific and liberate all the way Guam across the, and the world Philippines from Spain as well. Teddy didn't even ask his boss to do this. He literally sent off a cable to the Navy commander in Asia that was like, George Dewey, go attack the Philippines where Spain what is. The heck, what Teddy? Your wow. is. And George Dewey's He's like, a rough okay, rider. I mean, told they to call go him rough to rider. war with Spain and the Philippines. Teddy was sort of of the mind, like, better to ask forgiveness than permission. I mean, I get that, but kind of nuts that he pulled it off. Anyway, and now because of Teddy Roosevelt, who we literally named the teddy bear after, side note, we are at war not in the Caribbean only, but also in the Pacific. The U.S. arrives to the Philippines and sees that the locals had already been fighting against the Spanish for, like, years. The Spanish were weak and were totally declining. So it's like the top of the ninth inning or like the fourth quarter of the Spanish in the Philippines. And, and the US US like, oh, you're like, welcome. Yep, I mean, you're gonna do it without us. The Philippines were like, yeah, let us liberate been you. Fighting this bloody war for years against the Spanish. So yeah, I guess United States, if you wanna come help us deal the final blow to Spain, like sweet. So George Dewey, this Navy commander and his fleet show up to Manila. Meanwhile, back in the US, people are like, wait, weren't we just supposed to invade Cuba? What are we doing in the Philippines now? And the US government's like, because the Philippines is a perfect hub for commercial opportunities in Asia, and we think that if we don't take it, Japan or Germany might take it, which would clearly diminish our geostrategic advantage in the Pacific. No, they didn't say that. They said, <laughs> we want to liberate the people mm -hmm. of the Philippines. Liberate. The people you liberate will witness the honorable and decent spirit Literally what they always of the American say. military. So really what they're saying about Venezuela, like this year, they're yeah. like, ah, oh, we got to go down and save all those starving people in Venezuela. We got to overthrow that government. It's, it doesn't end. It's the same thing over and over. Spanish see the U.S. arrive to the Philippines and they're like, great, we're done. So the Spanish military commanders ask to meet with the U.S. military commanders. They meet in secret and Spain's like, listen, I know we're losing, but we really wanna save some face here. We don't want it to look like we lost to the Filipino revolutionaries. And I'm not kidding. The Spanish commander literally said that he would quote, be willing to surrender to white people, but not to the Filipinos. What the so heck? the U.S. commander's like, okay, there's an opportunity here. We said we were here to liberate the Filipinos, but we haven't promised anything yet. So we would much rather it look like the U.S. defeated Spain instead of helped the Filipinos defeat Spain. Much better for our brand, says the United States. So together, the United States and Spanish militaries organize a fake battle. A fake battle in which the U.S. would fight the Spanish in Manila and the Spanish would intentionally lose. And the climax of this whole theatrical battle, according to the plan, was that at the end, the U.S. would storm towards the inner walled city of Manila, the last stronghold of where the Spanish are. Oh, and the key detail in this whole plan, they would not let the Filipino fighters, the ones that had been doing all of the actual fighting against the Spanish, join them as they stormed towards the walled city to deal the final blows the to heck? the Spanish Empire. And this would mean that the Filipinos technically didn't gain their independence. It was actually the U.S who conquered the Spanish. And then the Spanish were like, oh, can you give us $20 million for our troubles? And the U.S. was like, yeah, sure. So now the U.S. <laughs> wins the war and they yeah, claim sure. that is sovereignty very interesting. over the Philippines. So yeah, this happened. They did the fake battle. They won the war. And instead of liberating the Filipinos, they just say, hey, we're your new colonizers. Psych. Meanwhile, hey, back in the United States, you. they got to keep up this white savior liberation narrative that they created to justify going to war with Spain. So you see a lot more theatrical PR by the government. They staged this giant military parade in New York City where this military commander who did the fake war, George Dewey, marches down. They called it Dewey Day. It was like a two-day parade in New York City. They created a big like military arch for him. He became Whoa. like a military hero for having like what liberated the all these people from the Spanish. And then you start to see these like crazy advertisements, like this soap advertisement that has George Dewey, the commander, <laughs> washing his hands with the caption, quote, the first step towards lightening the white man's burden is through teaching the virtues of cleanliness. Oh. 
And on the sides, you have soap <sighs> being offloaded in the Philippines the and being given to the locals. Industry. The U.S. had to frame this not as conquest, but as the honorable duty of the U.S. Liberation. to civilize these people, or in the words of the soap ad, quote, to brighten the dark corners of the earth. Oh. Jeez. This is insane and was not that long ago. Okay, so this is where things really heat up. It's 1900 now, Spain loses the war, obviously, and the US now owns Puerto Rico, Guam, and they claim the Philippines. But the local Filipinos who have been fighting for their freedom for years are like, no, 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 no. You just waltzed in here on our rebellion and conspired with the Spanish to make it look like you were liberating us. No, this is our country. We don't need another colonizer. And this is where things really heat up. I wonder if they said it exactly like that, like Johnny, like really sassy. Yeah, probably. I would assume so because, you know, you're mad, you know? Yeah, and you got to get sassy about it. The that Filipinos guy actually died right fighting there? Again it looked very staged. And this time against the United States. It is a pretty horrible, bloody war, one that I never learned about in school. It includes nope. massacres mm -hmm. of men, women, and children by the United States, and hundreds of thousands of civilian deaths. But the U.S. eventually won, and they established a government in the Philippines. Back in the U.S., the appetite for expansion continued to go down, and people sort of just forgot about the Philippines. They forgot that there was a war there. One newspaper summed it up by saying, Americans didn't know if the Philippines were islands or canned fruit. But the fact what remains the that the U.S. went to war and now owned the Philippines, in addition to Puerto Rico and Guam. So this begged a very important question, one that hadn't been asked before, which is, is all of this land America? Are these people Americans? This was a huge question. And the answer to that question affects how we see these territories still today. Okay, so a few years after these wars, there's a guy in New York City who's importing oranges from one of these territories, Puerto Rico. And he's paying tariffs on these imports because, you know, that's what you do when you're importing oranges from another country. Wait a minute. Hey, hey let's another make country. it a territory. This guy was like, didn't we conquer Puerto Rico and Guam and the Philippines? Isn't that America? The, the Constitution says that you can't put tariffs on stuff coming from other parts of the U.S. Yeah. Like, New Jersey can't put tariffs on, like, avocados from California. So he avocados sued, and his case and a bunch of others like it made okay, it to the Supreme down from Georgia. So now the Supreme Court must decide, is this land where we just won a war, is this America? Are these Americans? If they are, do they get all the same rights as other Americans? Do they get to vote? Do they get to participate in the U.S. economy without tariffs, like any other state does? And honestly, this isn't a question about oranges and tariffs. The real question at stake here is, is America the land of the free where all are created equal? Imagine or them. Or are we an empire? Back no then, different than any other empire like... that... Hmm. Is there any way that we can make it so we get more money off of it, but, but they don't get any rights? Yeah, we don't want to give the non-white people any power. Yeah. Yeah. If for the... The Spanish are just like, yeah, we don't want to lose to the people that aren't white. So we'll lose to you. Yeah, I did not know that. That is that's, very interesting. That's crazy. Uh, they just, um, and then they like get the money out of it too still. Gosh, that's crazy. The U.S., it's all Teddy's fault. We <laughs> thought Teddy was a good guy because he went and he was trust busting. And he has... Teddy bears. And he was setting up Yellowstone National Park, saving the environment. But no, he did some bad stuff. Teddy, Teddy. Come dirty, on, man. Dirty, dirty. Come on, man. Scoops up colonial possessions in war and rules the people, who are usually black and brown, as subjects, not fully a part of the country. That was the question that was at stake. And in this series of cases in the early 1900s, the Supreme Court decided that America was the latter, is the latter. They created a new category of land called unincorporated territories, where the people don't have any representation in the democracy, but where Congress could create laws on their own, particularly laws dealing with revenue, which would not be allowed by the Constitution for states within the Union. 
We can create wow. revenue totally. laws, stuff that's totally unconstitutional for other parts of our country. So straight In up other did words, unincorporated territories the exact are thing they revolted we against. And exploit yeah. for revenue, but whose people don't get to vote and don't get the right to trial by jury. So yeah, the Philippines, in addition to Puerto Rico and Guam, remained unincorporated territories, a place that the U.S. could kind of just ignore without a lot of consequence. They weren't important enough or strategic enough to be considered to become states like Hawaii or Alaska. So they sort of faded from American consciousness. Like this is why we never heard about this in school. Like it didn't make it into the history books in any salient way. And how far the Philippines had faded from people's mind became very clear in December of 1941 during World War II. The U.S. had owned the Philippines for like 40 years when a fleet of Japanese bombers flew across the Pacific and bombed an American naval base in Hawaii. And but what we don't really remember is on that day, Japan bombed Guam and the Philippines, two American territories, as well as several other American and British territories. Oh, don't even mention it. Yesterday, I, yeah, I've never heard of that. December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. Here's the draft of this speech. This is the original draft that FDR spent the day marking up before he gave it. Zoom in a little bit and you'll see on this draft that it mentioned the Philippines originally, but FDR crossed it out. He crossed out the mention of Manila. Yes, the Philippines was on some map somewhere. Yes, we technically owned it, but the people really didn't want to hear about it because these people wow. weren't Americans. The Supreme Court had decided that. They weren't gonna become states anytime soon. So why mention them? After that day, Japan actually full-on invaded the Philippines. They didn't do that to Hawaii, but they did to the Philippines until the end of the war, at which point the Philippines were finally granted independence in 1946. Fast forward to today and this we own you but you're not really Americans precedent established by the Supreme Court still applies to four million people who live in unincorporated territories. Or let's just call it a spade a spade. Let's call them what they are. These are colonial possessions. The people who live here don't experience the full rule of law. They don't get trial by jury. They don't have full representation in our democracy. And they don't get to vote yeah, for the president. Happened. This is why when a hurricane hits Puerto Rico, the government response is not nearly what it should be. The way Trump talked about Puerto Rico as almost another country, as not a part of us, That's mirrors so... exactly how the Supreme Court talked about these unincorporated territories. They're for revenue not to compete with American farmers. We conquered these places, but we didn't want to bring the people fully into the American project. We left them out. It's basically and there what we, they remain yeah. today. Yeah, it's... Uh, and Puerto Rico, I don't know if Filipinos that are, are watching this follow anything about like American politics, but the Puerto Ricans voted that they wanted to join the United States and be a state. But there is a particular political party in the United States that is very against that because it would hurt their chance or it would hurt their uh, status in the Senate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because Puerto Rico's got a lot of people um, and most of them would not vote for that party. No, so it would create two more Senate seats, which would most likely go to... A party that is not to what the other party wants them to go to. So they're like, no, they cannot be a state. And, uh, and yeah, everyone else they're, is like, they're uh, fighting. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. Everyone except for the Puerto Ricans are just like. Hmm. So currently they want to make Puerto Rico a state and Washington, D.C. a state because currently one's a district and one's a territory and they don't have, they have more population than many states do but they don't get the same representation in the government as uh, some of those states like Wyoming that has 500,000 people. It's really interesting and we saw it with the Philippines here. Obviously things are better now. The Philippines, you're all out there doing your own thing and apparently you like Americans yeah. now, yay! Yeah. Or at least like us.
Please. And Johnny, Johnny. He's so serious all the time. Wow. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. It's really interesting. There's a lot of uh, like information, like the new information about that I ha haven't heard before. You kind of just hear, oh, yeah, then America bought. They beat Spain in the war. And then they bought the Philippines from yeah, Spain yeah, or they all, took it over. That's all we ever hear. Yeah. They didn't say, oh, yeah, they uh, just did a, like a little scheming and they made a deal to not give it to those Filipinos because yes. they're not white. Yes. And Spain did not want to lose to the non-white Filipinos. No. no. So interesting. Really interesting. Racism. Poor. Racism. Bad. 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 Thanks for watching, everybody. Hopefully you enjoy. Subscribe if you did. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.